Well, hello, friends. Well, hello, friends. Well, hello, friends. I'm Tim from Germany, and I'm currently working on making Serenity OS self-hosting. One of the two major things that I've worked on is to port all of our software to the new stream implementation, which is better tending errors and provides some nicer features compared to the old stream implementation. So here you can see a graph, which is not made by me, this is made by KRKK, and it shows how often we are using which type of stream. So the purple line above is the new stream that we probably want to migrate everything to. And the blue line below here, which kind of started dropping off in December, is the old AK stream. And since then, from about December to February, we completely removed all usages of the old stream and converted them to the new stream. The main reason why I did that, besides the obvious, is that I kind of wanted to get a feeling how to best work with those new streams and to kind of build some new features that I would feel like they could be useful when starting to actually implement new features using those streams. One of those new features is the second major thing that I worked on, which is support for LZMA and XZ compressed data. So for example, if we minimize this real quick and go into a terminal, we now have an LZCAT tool which can print compressed LZMA streams. So we use LZCAT and I've prepared some sample files, for example, LZMA A.LZMA which is one of the test files from the LZMA specification. And we can see it successfully decompressed the LZMA decoder test example. Um, I've also imported all of the other LZMA specifica specification tests into our testing framework. So for example, you can now go to user tests lib compress test LZMA. And we can see all of the seven test files at least decompress without crashing. One or two of the bad test files do not correctly, are not correctly recognized as bad yet because we don't implement all of the checks, but all of the specification files that are supposed to be decompressible successfully um, actually decompress okay. The same also works for XZ. So for that, we have XZCAT, which is basically the same as LZCAT, but for XZ compressed streams. And we've also have some test files here in XZ. And then we choose, for example, go to one LZMA to one, and we can see it success successfully decompressed the lorem ipsum. Um, the same as with LZMA, I've also imported all the tests for XZ, which is quite uh, quite a lot more than um, the LZMA tests. So if we run, run test XZ, we can see it runs a whole bunch of tests. Again, some of these are not compressible because they use filters that we haven't implemented yet. For example, a Delta filter or a filter for more efficiently compressing ARM64 binaries. And we also have some bad test files, which we do not recognize yet because um, we also don't have all the checks implemented yet, but a large majority of XZ archives will work. So the reason why I did this for self-hosting is because we download our toolchain source code as an XE archive. And now we can also go ahead and decompress or better not decompress because that is quite slow, but we can, for example, print all the files in the release archive of the LLVM project. And you can see it now successfully prints all of the files. My name is Hoeche and I live in Stockholm, Sweden. And right now, I'm working on improving our coverage for Southeast Asian scripts in our font Katissa. 
Our support for Southeast Asian scripts are a bit lacking in Katisa right now, so I'm working on improving that. You can see here that uh, Pao Hmong and Pao Xin Hao is more or less done. And uh, Tangsa and New Tai Lu is work in progress. I'm Kleines Filmreichen from Germany and I work on audio, time and anything that you probably don't care about. I have been writing a QOA decoder. QOA is the quite okay audio format, um, which is a new audio format that is very similar to QOI in that it is particularly simple. First of all, maybe you just want to compare this losslessly compressed rendition of Bad Apple. with this lossy compressed rendition of Bad Apple running in my new QOA decoder. And there are some lag points, but it works. Um, as you can probably hear, there is not much audible difference, but the bitrate is much, much, much lower. So now let's look at some code. These four files are all that is needed to implement the QOA loader, and as you will be able to tell by the line counts. We have 70 lines here. Overall, I think it's less than the 500 to 600 lines that the reference implementation needs. So it is pretty simple. The QOA loader plugin, of course, follows the convention of any other audio loader plugin. All of these files, all of these functions are very well known to you if you have ever looked at some loader um, plugin code. And then we have some stored information about the file that we're currently loading. And now some other codecs need to store a lot more data. For example, Flack needs to store a whole bunch of data, but um, QA is so simple that we only have these very few. Now in the CPP implementation, if we scroll up, a lot of these things are very standard, so I don't think they're particularly interesting. Parsing the header is very basic because there's just two data points in the header, the magic and the total samples. And then loading a frame, that's actually pretty interesting um, because loading a header is not uh, quite trivial. The actual header loading happens in this function um, because we have a bunch of information in there. And then we need to figure out how many channels we have and the LMS state, which is the main part of the compression uh, that we need to load from the file. And then we need to actually go through all of the slices and read them. And then we recombine the channels into the proper amount of channels that we want to output. Read one slice function is of course very important. We basically unpack the slice, which involves some bit magic. And then we take the slices, do a prediction of what the sample should actually be, and then look at what's the error and what do we need to update our prediction with. And then in the end, we can output the reconstructed sample. Predict and update functions can be found over here. Prediction is basically just a weighted sum, which is very normal in signal processing. And the update function basically just looks at whether the sample was like pointing in the right direction or not, which is what this conditional does and updates the weights accordingly. And then we shift around the history. The main other part here is like all of the driver code. We have this seek function which can calculate very precisely where in the file we need to seek because QA is usually a constant bitrate format. The other main driver function is get more samples, which basically in a loop tries to load a frame until we have enough frames for what the user requires with this max samples to read from input. We only have to do one allocation up here and then we read into that large array repeatedly. So I hope if you want to write another audio decoder for Serenity, you now know what to do. The other thing that I've been working on is compiling GML to actual C++ code. If you didn't know before, we would only compile GML into a string and then load that at runtime. And there is some infrastructure in libgraphics to do that. But that's slow and also error prone because you will only notice the mistake in your GML 
once you actually start the application. This method of generating C++ initializer code should help us reduce compile times and also catches all of these errors at compile time. So just to demonstrate, I will run the GML compiler on an actual GML file from help, like the main help window GML. As you can see, it says it's auto-generated. It implements this try create function, which in turn will just see, okay, well, we need this kind of main widget. We need to fill it with a background color. Then we need to add a layout and then we're going to add a bunch of children. And if you compare that with the window GML, here it is, it looks very similar. So you see, this is the main widget class. You see the fill with background color here. You see the layout here with the spacing of two. So this is actually not a lot of generator code, only about 300 lines. And it also contains a lot of lookup tables. So hopefully this will in the future allow us to write better GML and check that the GML is correct sooner.